Welcome to Jesus My King Podcast. Thank you for joining us today. We are so excited that you are here. We hope that you'll be blessed, enlightened, and inspired by what you hear. We offer God talk, testimonials, and more. If you like what you hear, please subscribe and share with your friends and family. Welcome, everybody. Um, This is our God Talk um, this week. We used to say Thursdays, but we're kind of off on our schedules during the holiday season. Um, Jerry got a new job, so we're still trying to work that out. So just forgive us. Deal with this as we try and find that consistency again. Um, But today it is just Kelly and I. And um, we're going to talk about something that's really dear to our hearts um, that actually provided both of us a ton of healing in our lives and that is a that inner healing ministry and what is that um what does it look like we've both gone through it um and praise the lord because i know for myself it gave me so much strength and um just this amazing freeness like freeing freeness is that a word i don't know freedom Freedom. that might be the word i'm looking for (laughs) but um yeah where there's just this huge weight that had been lifted and i wished i had an inner healing whenever i was going through my marriage but so did you so did you know this type of thing existed never no no not at all and it wasn't until i i was working at nebraska furniture mart and um a good friend of ours uh, Jerry and I, because we both work there, um, had told us about it, and um, it was actually to, um, it was, you know, he said that might help the, the ex-boyfriend that I had, maybe he needs to go through it, and actually, I benefited, yeah. <laughs> I went through yeah. it, and I benefited greatly, but um, what does that look like, I mean, what is it exactly, and, and why do we need anything like inner healing, you know, um, in my marriage, we went through counseling and it didn't help. I really believe that the way that this process is set up, that it could heal marriages, Mm -hmm. that it could, it restores, I know for me, restores family. You know, it does so much because you're digging deeper to the root of where things came in. Yeah. Like I've heard of, I mean, counseling's good, you Mm -hmm. know, but I've heard of so many stories of counseling after counseling after counseling and no change or they go back you know? to the way yeah, even was. addictions and stuff like mm-hmm. they say that um inner healing and all of that has been um more beneficial sometimes than just the counseling you probably need both but um yeah i didn't know about it until i was in a crisis of my own life and one of my friends um a new friend said hey I think I know what you need, and she, oh, yeah, she knew. <laughs> it was the best thing ever. So, um, so what do you what do you want to? Well, I mean, it, so I was going to say, you mm-hmm. went through it. Both of us, um, we both are part of, well, I'm taking a break, but we both go through this ministry where we deal with inner healing every week. And um, this is the same program that Kelly and I went through. And we both had, we call them sessions, mm-hmm. but we had several sessions of just really deep inner healing because, you know, um, and I, I'm not going to, I don't have my Bible in front of me today because I was in a hurry, but... Um, We were discussing in Malachi 4 or 5 how it talks about in the end times, um, God is going to pour out the spirit of Elijah on people, and he's going to restore fathers to sons and sons to fathers. In the end times, we have so much brokenness in the family. That's where we are right now. We have so much abuse, so many divorced families, so many just horrible, horrific things that are going on in each individual person. And... um, and that spirit of Elijah, that's that assignment, um, you know, on just get basically an assignment at that anointing um, to basically break the demonic force that, that is to bring restoration. And that's what a lot of this does. And so his was to bring restoration in nations. Our assignment is to bring restoration in our community, the people that we're dealing with, whether it's at work or our friends or Bible study or wherever we're at. Um, and so that's where that initially came from. Um, 
So that's walking through forgiveness. There, yeah, what does that look like? So, yeah, I mean, we are, you know, we are allowing when we decide to go through inner healing to allow Jesus to come in and to heal our hearts, allow Jesus to come into those broken places. And if we decide that we don't want Jesus and we want to do it on our own. Well, we have, so there is, when there's unforgiveness, it's kind of in one way, you're, judgment on a person you're Mm -hmm. like you you're holding them accountable instead of forgiving them and releasing them um and the idea of it is that it's jesus's job to take care of justice Mm -hmm. and to um it's not our job to judge other people's hearts we need to forgive If, if we don't forgive how can jesus forgive us so by forgiving other people who have hurt us we are able to cut off at the root Mm -hmm. and um, yeah get freedom from that basically but I don't think we realize so much of what we hold on to Mm -hmm. and so for me going through it um, I didn't realize you know that I was still holding on to the pains of you know my dad not being around I didn't realize that I thought I had released all that well and it's weaved its way into other relationships in your life possibly into relationships with men Mm -hmm. um, are a lot of times affected by not having your father around and things like that so if if you go back to the original wound and you deal with that original wound then you cut you cut off the unforgiveness and the legal right for the enemy to harass you in that because it kind of weaves a web through your life in different areas. Right. And let's talk about the enemy too, because we're talking about spiritual warfare. And, um, one of the sermons I was listening to was how the spirit of Jezebel is this big controlling spirit, manipulative, the one that's destroying families, you know, and the part of spirit of, of Jezebel is not wanting us to believe that there is a spiritual warfare, to believe that there's anything like that going on. But when we hold on to those pains and those wounds, when we set them up as idols in our life, basically, we are giving that spirit of Jezebel and whatever partnering spirits free reign in our life. And it's all about you're getting agreeing. to the, you're agreeing, you're agreeing with, with, it. with them, even though you don't realize that you're doing it and so it's about cutting off those spiritual roots and that's why that inner healing is so important more so than what i believe you would get out of counseling because you're not dealing with the spirits in counseling you're not dealing with the spiritual root but in inner healing you are and so i don't know that's why when i started going to it and i don't know if it's for everybody i've heard some people say that you know they didn't get anything from it but for me and for you i I mean this is a personal thing, but I don't understand how you couldn't get anything. Else. I don't either. I don't either. Unless you just don't believe. You don't mm-hmm. have that belief system. You know, and that's something I, you know, I was, I grew up Baptist, which is fine. And I, you know, I learned my Bible well and everything. But I was always taught, you know, as soon as you get saved, you're free. And I do believe that in one sense. Yes, I believe that you, that you have that. It's kind of like God gives you the key to your freedom, but now put the key on the door and turn the knob. Yes. You know, most people don't put the key on the door and turn the knob. They just, they say, I'm never going to let that happen again. And, and, and then they go on and they turn, but what they don't realize is they're making a vow or whatever again. Oh yes. I'm never going to allow a man to do this to me in my life again. I'm never going to remarry. I'm never going to, whatever the, the vows or whatever it is that you're making a promise to, I heard somebody say about um you know they had this close relationship with their dad and it got to be where he was really controlling through a divorce relationship or whatever and so she had made this vow that she was never going to have a son like if she was going to get pregnant she wanted a girl well guess what she kept on having miscarriages and so when she went through her inner healing they asked her have you ever made a promise or have you ever said or made a vow that you don't want a male child? And she said, yes. Well, when you gave miscarriages or whenever you had miscarriages, what were they were boys, you know? And so to break that vow, which I know sounds crazy and, you know, just 
But that's what we don't understand. Like, I don't think so many people are taught that there is legal rights in the spirit realm. You know, heaven is like a courtroom. You know, it. it so I think I've explained this before. So someone once told me, if you're standing there in front of God and, and Satan saying, well... I have the right to be here because she did this and this and this and this and she sent here and she did this and all I have to do is raise my hand and say God he's right I did those things please forgive me for them I don't want to do them anymore and then all of a sudden he has no legal right to be there because I've repented right you know and um if we don't understand how the system works we don't know how to cut it off mm-hmm. and You can change your thought process because the enemy speaks to us. He lies to us. He whispers in our ear all day long. Yeah. You know, but when you don't, when he doesn't have that legal right to harass you anymore, it's a lot easier to hear the truth. Right. Exactly. Well, and I think it's interesting, um, you know, and I, I, in studying this, was just coming across a lot of um, articles that were against it. Same thing that you were saying, that once they were saved that all that went away. Well, if that's the case, why do we still have Christians who are going through broken homes and, and divorced families mm-hmm. or all this is happening? And and to really get to the root of, can, I believe, heal those marriages, I believe can restore, and it's not just because I was saved. I mean, there is more work that we have to do beyond that. We do have a freedom in Jesus Christ, yes. But we also have to heal still. Within. And we're being refined and we're learning. And mm-hmm. I mean, otherwise, right? There, you know, why are we here? Mm-hmm. We're still learning, we're still growing, and we're still teaching others. Um, yeah, that, and you know, and I, I have many family members who believe that way. And um, I've had the freedom in my own life. And to hear, to go sit at Christmas, Thanksgiving, whatever. And listen to the stories about how someone did this to them 20 years ago. And you want to say, oh, I thought you're safe now. You're better now. But, yeah. but, and it's okay. People get hurt. But it's so, like, I so want to tell, I want, I want to say, you don't have to worry about that anymore. You can have freedom there. You can stop worrying about that thing that happened to you 20 years ago that, you know. Well, because we fragment off anytime, um, well, first of all, when we try and take control of the situation and our emotions, in fact, we are fragmenting because we're building these walls up. Anytime, you know, through our lives, and I believe that the, the devil is the same continuously in each wound throughout our individual oh, yeah. lives. And so it'll start maybe with um, an an abuse of some kind, and then it'll come to a wound that affects you the same way in a relationship, and and so on. And so you're fragmented, you know, in several different parts. There's a lot of healing that needs to happen. And a lot of this stuff, you can't do it on your own. You you don't even know. Like, uh, there's stuff when we went through it, and I get excited because we both went through healing. We know what it feels like. We want that so much for everybody, and it is probably really frustrating to sit down and be like, I can help you. Yeah. I I mean, we can can help this if you just really believe that, you know, that this can be done. I think back to, you know, I had some rough teenage years, and I... I did kind of when I look back I did inner healing on my own um, in a long drawn out process with God just me and God and it did work but um, there's things I know now about that like the forgiveness process um, sometimes we think we don't need to forgive people because they didn't know what they did or um it was my perception and not something they really did wrong. Mm-hmm. But the truth is, if it's your perception, then you it's you still hold that there and you need to get rid of it. I mean, there's, you know, forgiving. I didn't know that I need. It never crossed my mind I needed to forgive myself. I don't know oh, why. Oh, yes, but, yeah. You know, and anybody who was there. So, um, I guess that's something we could talk about. Yeah, so too. what does it look like? So, um... Well, we could talk about maybe 
what it looks like in the the when we do it in Freedom Fighters. But um, I was telling Kelly even just a couple weeks ago, um, you know, and I'm familiar with with kind of the process and, and what I need to do, but. I started to go down this depression road, like, and I realized I was kind of going into a slump, and, and you know, what I think it is for me is I'm not surrounded right now with the people that I was surrounded with before, as far as good Christian community, um, we had kind of a crazy schedule with our podcast, and, um, yeah, maybe it was the gloomy winter days, I don't know, but I was slipping, and I started to deal with some issues with a friend as far as the rejection, and, all this stuff all over again, and finally I'm like, screw this, excuse me, <laughs> I'm going to lock myself in the room, and Ransom Heart is a really good um, app that you can find that offers a lot of prayers, yeah. and I, it has an inner healing prayer, and I never pulled it up before, but I pulled it up, and I was on my hands and knees, and went through the prayer, went back to where was the, where was the root of that hurt, mm-hmm. And, you know, just released it all to God. And I am telling you, I feel amazing yeah. thereafter. And I have not been in that funk for two weeks now. And I am just, you know, head on ready to go again. So, And that's something that you need to think about when you, when you are, when you make that decision to do that. You need to ask the Lord where the root of it is. Because, so, you know, if you're having a marital issue, um... You need to ask the Lord where that started. Because the truth is, it could have started with something with you and your father when you were little. And how you treat your husband or something like that. So you might not, like, I would have never known that. I would have thought, oh my gosh, this situation happened and I need to deal with this situation. But that the whole point is, you got ask the Lord to take you to the root of it. So if he takes you, ask him what memory in your life has affected this. So let's talk about that. So when we go into our little sessions, in our in our Freedom Fighters, we have a leader mm-hmm. um, who basically facilitates. We've got two people that um, are discerners, and that is just listening to maybe what God, they feel like God is telling them through words. And I know that sounds a little bit crazy, but it's a practice, practice on hearing. And then we have somebody who's interceding, who's praying, and even the discerners are praying. Everybody is praying together. Um, But when that client comes in, what does that look like? So we lead them to that place. We praise and worship and then... Yeah, and, you know, we tell people all the time, don't, you know, some a lot of people come in with an agenda, with something that they're struggling with, and that's okay, but the but you really want to make sure that the Lord is taking you right to where he wants you to. So, you know, if you have a memory, sometimes it's a simple memory that you don't even realize is an issue, and you question, is this really what I'm hearing? But then other times, it's really painful and deep, you know, but whatever that memory is, then... Um, you need to look, go back to the memory and think about who was there and how it affected you. And then um, forgiving everybody involved in it. Forgiving God for the, for the grudges or things that you may have held against God because of what happened. But, yeah, that's huge yeah. because I know um, someone who went through tremendous abuse when they were a kid and they held this hate and this anger towards God. Like you had control. You could have done this. You, you know, if you are all God, why couldn't you have stopped this evil person from happening? And we know that we have free will and it was just a matter of where, where is Jesus at that point? And, and do you think he's feeling good about what's going on, you know, and, and yes. letting him come into that broken heart, that, that place in your heart, because he wants to shine his light in it. So let his light overtake, you know, that, well, that situation. Well, a lot of it, uh, um, something that's really cool about that is, you know, the Bible says that God is omnipresent and he never leaves us. He's always with us. So we ask the client, the person to go back to that memory. And once they've done forgiveness and stuff, just kind of to see if you can sense Jesus there, because the the word tells us he is there. He never left you. So even if you picture him in your, you know, in that memory and you didn't, you know, even if it's part of your imagination, he is there. And, but the cool, cool thing about it is a lot of times once the forgiveness and everything is there, um, 
a lot of times they'll see Jesus crying over what happened yeah. or that he was hurting for them too, you know, or that he was, he was there with them the whole time, you know, what they didn't see before. And all of a sudden, you know, the memory gets a little bit lighter. Mm-hmm. It's lifted. But, mm-hmm. Yeah. Forgiveness is huge in all of that. And, um, and covering in, in so many areas, like in this instance, um, you know, the person that abused him, well, their parents had to, I mean, what was his childhood Mm -hmm. like, you know, and do we need to go further and forgive grandparents? Do we need to go further and forgive our own grandparents? Maybe see, you know, just, Mm -hmm. um, people that were in that moment, just make sure that everything, everything is covered completely. Um, but yes, forgive yourself. So not always is it that we are the victim. Sometimes we are the one that is well, and, causing the pain. Yeah. So, I mean, we got to forgive ourselves as well. And even like if it's, you know, an older memory, you know, sometimes 13-year-old needs to forgive 29-year-old. Yeah. <laughs> you know, or 20, and then, you know, for, for leaving her behind, for mm-hmm. having such a traumatic experience that... 29 year old just decides you know what I don't like that 13 year old I'm not going to be that person anymore I'm done with her Mm -hmm. and that's then you've left part of yourself there you you know so even forgiving in that you can have your life back you know have your memories back and it can be um you can not splinter yourself off yeah basically you know or heal the splintering that was there um, what about cursing, like curses, not cussing, that's not what I'm talking about necessarily, but recognizing maybe um, when somebody is speaking bad over us, or if we in turn are, you know, that person is so selfish, but we are speaking curses over people and vice versa. So there's also in that ransom heart uh, mm-hmm. a really good um, prayer about breaking curses and breaking that off because that in, in turn is making agreements. Um, and then of course the vows we talked about mm-hmm. that and how we you know will speak those. And so it's just it's that's why I love that prayer is what have I agreed with? What have what have I spoken in my life? You know, and I had to go through and okay, you know. Go through and basically say, no, that was a lie, you know. Um, I think about that a lot of times. Um, (laughs) After being in this ministry and having my own children, you hear so many times that, you know, my parents used to say that you're you're this or you're that or you're never going to be this or you're never going to be that. And, like, I'm like... What am I saying to my kids? What what do I, yeah, you know, that's I'm true. Right? <laughs> that's so. true. Um, and then another thing that we deal with is soul ties, which is mm-hmm. also really important. Whenever you, um, how would you explain that really? Well, soul ties would be, I mean, it can be an intimate relationship, but it can be um, a friendship or even siblings or. Or maybe anybody that you have allowed to have control over your emotions in any kind of way. Mm-hmm possibly where you want to break that soul tie again Rance has got some great prayers for that too but um so those are different things that we deal with when we go through this and so basically you're just healing all those fragmented pieces and um getting complete healing where you can completely walk in freedom and we always see people that come in with just heaviness so much heaviness and by the end of the session there's just so much lifted and it is so beautiful to see that we've we've had the honor of seeing lots of lots of healing and and restoration and lives changed and um i just think it's for if you're a christian if you're a believer in my personal opinion, it should be for you because we all have, if you have lived, you've experienced some sort of disappointment or um, trauma or trauma. heartache. Yeah. Um, I mean, if you've ever had any relationship that's gone bad or anything, you know, mm-hmm. it's all, 
Um, so restoring the heart, basically. Yeah. Restoration and restoring how we worship. And it's all about the heart because all of that that we've gone through in our life is just broken completely into pieces. And and that is what they were talking about Malachi, how he's going to send out that spirit of, of Elijah. And that's to restore people back to God and, and coming from the heart, not just going through the motions. But being free and getting rid of all that, that and, and getting healing. And so when you when you do get healing from those things, you break off that root. It has no legal right to be there. And so you can walk out of there confident that, um, you know, that old is gone. If you do it learn. It has no power over you anymore. Right. And you do learn how to renounce like yeah. you recognize right away like as soon as you know we went through it it was mm-hmm. I recognize when anxiety is starting to creep in I recognize when my feeling of not being worthy is starting to creep right. in you know and you learn you know in Jesus name I don't want you I renounce you mm-hmm. go right. <laughs> you know and it's really important yeah. and so maybe maybe we should explain that a little bit like you know a lot of people have anxiety and things like that well um how how does that come into play in this? You know, where does the anxiety come from? Mm-hmm. Is it, you know, is it, it comes from some of the, the lies that the enemy has been telling you about a situation. Um, so some of these spirits and stuff have different jobs mm-hmm. and working together to harass you and um, stress and anxiety, you know, when you... Chaos and confusion. Yeah. I mean, there's all kinds of... Yeah, and when you cut when you cut those off, um, you start to have a panic attack again. You know, maybe um, <laughs> I'm trying, trying to think of, of the words trying there. Think, <laughs> I'm trying to think of an example. You know, like I I used to I used to be on Zoloft for like 12 years because I had panic attacks and everything, and I realized those came in from um, partying and things that doing drugs and things like that, that I didn't, you know, I had no idea that that is a legal right, that that is something that I'm agreeing with. So yes, come and, you know, even, um, even um, this happens a lot, you know, tarot cards and things like that. Yeah. We talked about that in my testimony. Even, I mean, young girls go to sleepovers and do tarot cards. You do it one time thinking it's a silly game. Well, that's a legal right that the Mm. enemy has. The Ouija board. Yes. And so those things, so you agree with it once and then you've allowed a certain something to come in, harass you. And then if you say that you say that it's anxiety and then you're like, yes, I'm anxious. I have anxiety. Well, then you're agreeing, with you're you. agreeing with your anxiety too. So then, mm-hmm. you know, what else works with that? So when you go and you repent for doing the tarot cards, mm-hmm. for doing the drugs and you renounce it, you get rid of it and you turn away from it. Um, it no longer has that really? right. To bother you, that anxiety, the right that it had to be there has to go now. And so when it comes back and says, remember me? Yeah. You know, aren't you anxious? You say, no, I'm not because I took care of that. Yeah. And so you need to leave. <laughs> I wrote a list when I was going through my last two weeks where I went through that, that inner healing. I wrote a list down for myself. Um, that if I start to get down, I just read it. I am worthy. I mm-hmm. am this. I right. am that. I am da da da. And, and it helps. the truth. Yes. yes. And and instead of allowing any worry to creep in, any anxiety, whatever, I just proclaim it. Mm-hmm. Proclaim it. Proclaim it. Goes. But guy, and I'm I'm good. You know. Mm-hmm. So anyway. Kelly and I both have access to a wonderful place where you can get inner healing. If you would like to help to get inner healing on that, um, just message us. Let us know if you're interested, um, or if you want to. T- if we, if you want us to help you yeah. in any way, we can lead you in prayers or whatever. Questions. Yeah, um, we definitely have benefited. Um, mine was October 12th on my birthday, 2017, mm-hmm. and. Um, Man, has it been a journey since then. It's mm-hmm. been really, really cool. So um, I recommend it. I know you do too. Oh, yeah. So yeah. anyway, we would love to help you through it and give you some information. But we are running out of time. Um, we don't know when we're going to be back. It will be next week sometime, hopefully. We'll pray that Jerry yeah. is with us. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But it, once 
we get over the holiday hump, I think it'll be a lot easier. Mm-hmm. But we're going to try and stick with you every week. So, um, yeah, I think that's yeah, it. We just got to make. We just got to get back on a schedule and decide what day works. Right now, we're kind of trying to figure out between Jerry's schedule and our schedules and everything. But yeah. hopefully, we will settle in on a date soon. Soon. All right. Thank you, guys. Thank Have a blessed you. week.